Welcome to Boxing During Dinner. As you can see, we are back home. Yeah. Our first home, which actually our first home was my was old apartment. Was old home, yeah. But this is, this is the Boxing During Dinner home. That's what everybody knows us for, is, is Alex's apartment. Exactly. And here we are. The day that Alex moves from here, I'm gonna cry. I won't, I'll be okay. Because <laughs> that, means, that means he would have moved on to a bigger and better Better house, better situation. That's good, I'd be happy so, for it. But we cry because of the memories. The memories. And all the bikinis that used to show up right here in this corner. I know, there's nothing right there. Look, I want to address something that's been on the YouTube uh, board for a little while. We are <laughs> working on this. This is not something that we've totally forgot about. Models are still a priority to the show as much as boxing is, and we're going to find something for you sooner than later. Yeah, we're really going to... You know what? Now that you said that, we're really going to try this yeah. week. I just came back from vacation, so with your wife, with with a, with a clear mind, it was my one my one year anniversary. Congratulations! All of you remember the and day it, I got married. And believe it or not, they're actually happy. They're still happy. <laughs> We're still this happy after good. after one year. Yeah. We'll see how year two and you know turns out. Hey, but, but for now, so far so good. But David, a lot of stuff to get to, so we'll we'll start off quickly. Fight of the year, I, in my opinion, Brandon Reels and Mike Alvarado. And, and that's one of those fights that when when we spoke about it a couple weeks ago, we, we said that it could be fight of the year. We expected a war, and they didn't disappoint. Everybody expected this to be a fight of the year contender, and how could you, you know, you're always a little pessimistic. Like, oh, is it going to really live up to the expectation that we've had for it? Especially when the bar was set that high. Lo and behold, this fight delivered on every single expectation. The, the action started maybe within 10 seconds of the first round, and it didn't stop until the seventh round when uh, when Rios caught Alvarado with that uh, looping right hook that, you know, kind of had him on, on Queer Street, as they call it, uh, up against the ropes. But both of these guys gave as good as they took for, for the entire fight. I got to give props to Brandon Rios because I, I doubted him. I, I was not impressed with how he's performed lately, and he came into this fight as determined as I've seen him at any point in his career. He looks good at 140. Again, match him up against the boxer and he's going to be in out of his depth, but if he's matched correctly against guys who uh, are willing to get his type of fight, then he's must-see TV every single time, and, and kudos yeah, and, to him. And as you said, you know, coming off a fight against Richard Abreu, which a lot of people thought he lost, he got outboxed, but, you know, to, to his credit, he wasn't comfortable at 135. He's been having problems making the weight, finally fights at 140 against a bigger guy. What was impressive was that you know, not, not only did he feel comfortable, but the, the power still seemed to be there. I mean, I, there's not, I can't remember too many fights where I've seen one guy hit his opponent as hard <laughs> as, as Brandon hit Rios hit Alvarado. I mean, or as hard as Alvarado hit Rios. I mean, if you think about it, I don't think there's anyone else who could have been in the ring that night outside of a Madonna or Matisse who could have taken either of the punches those guys were throwing. I mean, it was. But, it no, was there, there were some people booing the, the, the stoppage. I mean, those people, <laughs> I think, wanted to see Alvarado get killed because right. he would have gotten killed. And uh, but you know, kudos to to Brandon Reels. He's one of the favorite fighters of boxing during dinner. You know, we mentioned him a lot. We've had Robert Garcia on the show. Yeah. And something that I was mentioning to you before we started recording, that Re um, Garcia that one time told us, look, you know, we don't, I don't try to change Brandon Reels. Brandon right. is who he is. We work with what he's got. He's a big puncher and he's exciting to see. And with that power, I mean, he could, he could knock out anybody in that division from 140 to 147. It's just a matter of how he reacts against a guy who, who comes out and boxes him like Richard Abril did. The dilemma, I think, is you know he has the sustained power over the course of a fight to wear guys down and knock them out. I just think if he gets in with a boxer, even a guy like Timothy Bradley, you know, for example, because there's talk that Rios might even be up to 147 sooner than later. You know, he gets in with a, with a boxer of any sort of dimension, and I just don't think he's going to land enough punches to do this type of work. But let's call it what it is. He's an exciting fighter in the right types of fights. You know, he's, he's exciting to watch. And leading up to that fight, we kept saying that, you know, Rios Alvarado should be the main event because of the type of fight it was. And, and we kept ignoring Donaire <laughs> and Nishioka, and rightfully so. I mean, Rios Alvarado was fight of the year. Nishioka, he, he didn't... He didn't um, he didn't impress. I mean, he kind of disappointed in his um, in his U.S. debut and and uh, Don Donaire. You know, he he did what he had to do. He did what what everybody expected him to do. He went in. He showed why he's one of the top pound for pound fighters. I don't want to talk too much about the fight because it was it was it was a one sided fight. But what do you think is next for uh, for Donaire? Not as the next as in Jorge Arce, which right. is the one they're talking about. But who would you like to see him fight? 
I'd love to see him fight Reagan Diao or, or Abner Mars. Those two guys are legitimately the best in at 122. And and I you know I do believe that Donaire would take on all comers. I'm I'm unsure as to why he's he's putting Guillermo Reagan Diao to the side and saying that he's not, you know, at the level that's necessary for him to fight. He is absolutely the other best fighter at that weight right. class. And that's and I don't feel like there's many people who disagree with that. It is a purist fight, but Reagan Diao is getting paid good top rank money. And top rank fighters, you know, Donaire's the other one. These guys can make money to fight I, each other. I, I definitely I just, don't want to see him against Jorge Arce. No, it's just another old name to put on his resume. It's a fight that Donaire's going to win. Arce is not at this level. Donaire is a phenomenal counterpuncher. His speed is, you know, just on a different level. And, and I will say this was one of his more complete performances yeah, since did, the knockout of Fernando good. Montiel. He's this is as good as he's looked. Um, but I just want to see him fight somebody, not a 36-year-old who's already, you know, five or six years past his peak. And speaking of uh, guys who are in their late 30s, Eric Morales, another shot at a title this weekend against Danny Garcia. To his credit, David, you know, a lot of people think Eric Morales is done, and, and you know, maybe I'm he's my sentimental favorite since you know we got to hang yeah. with him, got to <laughs> interview him, I got to work with him during the, the Olympics, but. Uh, Eric Morales, the first time he fought Danny Garcia, three weeks before the fight, had his gallbladder taken out, yeah. and he still took the fight, and he still managed to bust up Danny Garcia's face. Now, at the time, people were saying, oh, well, you know, he lost to Danny Garcia, Danny Garcia's an up-and-comer, maybe he's not at that level yet, until Danny Garcia beats the crap out of Amir Khan, and then all of a sudden we're like, hey, you know, maybe Eric Morales isn't done. I, to me, it's going to be a, a very difficult task for Morales to beat Garcia, but does he have the outside shot? Yes, and, and I'm hesitant to say that, but I think we're also, there's a hesitancy to, or a tendency, I'm sorry, to maybe overstate the impressiveness of Garcia's victory over Khan, because if you take away the first two and a half rounds, Amir Khan was dominating that fight. Garcia looked totally lost until he was able to to connect. And to his credit, he came in and started to make some adjustments. But but Garcia struggles with with boxers. Morales can still box, and he has a better chin than Amir Khan. And I think that alone makes him a, a competitive opponent. With that said, you know Garcia is the younger guy. He's probably the stronger guy. And it just, it's hard to climb that mountain after the battles that he's been in with Barrera and Pacquiao. Yeah, it's, you know, it's and everything. A, a lot of years of uh, At 36 wars. years old, I mean, those those fights have to hang with you. I mean, I, he's done Rio's Alvarado like 20 times. 20 times, times. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So Eric Morales, does he have a shot? I mean, he can make this a competitive fight. I think he's going to perform better this time around than he did in the first time. Um, but I, I just don't know that that's going to be enough to beat a young, hungry fighter like Danny Garcia. And another, uh, another one of uh, boxing during dinner's good friends, Randall Bailey, yep. finally going to get to fight Devin Alexander. It's a, uh, it's a fight that I don't necessarily like for him, because yeah. Alexander's a, a boxer. He's going to fight from the outside. Bailey's not as active as I, as I would like him to be. Even, even early in his career, <clears throat> I remember screaming at the television when he fought Ishe Smith, yeah. when he fought Miguel Cotto. You know, just let your hands go, and he, he really never does, but once he does, he has that one punch, devastating power, so we've seen Devin Alexander hit hit the canvas against uh, Lucas Matisse, who's another hard hitter. Yep. I think Bailey hits harder. It's going to be tough, but do you think Bailey has, has a chance at that one punch knockout? Yeah, of course he does. The problem is that Devin Alexander looked incredible against Marcos Maidana. I think 147 has served him well. He he rarely engages if he has to. He's very content to use that ah, 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 jab that he's always yelling. You know, at 100, I mean, you saw that, that he used that at Maidana at will. And Randall Bailey is fighting a guy who's faster and harder to hit than Mike Jones was, and he didn't even punch Mike Jones until the 11th right. round of the fight. Um, I, I, Bailey's power is, is unlike anyone else who puts on gloves, but he has to throw it in order to land it. And if he doesn't land it, you know, I'm sorry, if he doesn't throw it, then Devin Alexander, like you said, is exactly the wrong opponent for him. Um, if he's willing to, you know, to engage a little bit more, fine. This, this could be a knockout for Randall Bailey, but I just don't see a scenario where he, he fights at that pace because we've never seen him fight at that pace. And, um... Malinaji, you know, he's been a guy that, that that I feel like he's been fighting forever. Yeah. And, uh, you know, to, to he fought, I remember when he fought Miguel Cotto. And and a lot of people didn't like Pauli Malinaji. And he, he went in that fight, they broke his jaw, and he, he fought throughout the entire fight with a broken jaw. Yeah. He gained a lot of respect in that fight. 
And through the years, I think Malinaji is a guy that's gained the respect of everybody in the boxing game. You know, everybody was happy when when he won his uh his world title. He's uh he's a success. He's, he's been a guy who's persevered. This is his homecoming. Yep. He's gonna be fighting at the Barclays Center in in, in Brooklyn. Do you expect a great performance from Pauli Malinaji? Because yeah. I, I expect him to probably easily dominate Pablo Cesar Cano. I do. I, in fact, what I think is the, the most, you know, the sub storyline to this is Alexander is fighting on the same night as Malinaji, and those two guys have been back and forth at each other for a while. There's a chance that both of these guys come away as welterweight champions by the end of the night and set up a unification bout down the line. Um, that to me is, is the storyline here. But yeah, I expect Malinaji to to whitewash Pablo Cesar Cano. He's somehow got power at 147. He's he's started to, to sit down on his punches a little bit more as he's gotten older. That could be a product of the fact that he's, you know, he's not in his, his 20s anymore. Um, this guy's in his early 30s. You know, I, Malinaji to me is, is a very good fighter and a lot, a lot of people want to sleep on that because he never had knockout power. But now that he's starting to knock out, you know, granite chinned, you know, welterweights and stuff like that, he's he's put the division on notice. Um, I think he's he's going to look good in uh, in Brooklyn on Saturday. And kudos to him. I'm a big Malinaji fan. And one more one more fight. Peter Quillen, he's fighting in a, in a great middleweight uh, Hassan fight. Hassan Dom Nikjam. <laughs> That's the best that we're going to try to promote. It's a I'm, WBO I'm not, not going to try, but it, it's it's a good fight. The the winner comes out as a top contender in the middleweight division. Well, there's a need to get the WBO middleweight belt for for whatever that's worth. But you know, Quinlan's earned this this opportunity. I think you know as much as anybody else at 160 pounds. This legitimizes him, and I think it you know should he win this belt, and I expect him to, that he's going to start to get good fights at this weight class that he's wanted for such a long time. Um, oddly enough, the, the title fight is the one that unlocks the good fights, <laughs> not the other way around. Um, but you know, I, I expect Quillen to win this fight as well, and uh, it should be a good display for a lot of people. The fight that to me is is the biggest toss up and the biggest question mark is, is Bailey Alexander. Um, yeah. But I'm excited to see all these fights. Big opening four title fights uh, on this card. For I'm the excited. Barclays Center. It I'll be, definitely be watching. Should be a good and night. Um, we can't forget on Friday night, Orlando Cruz is fighting on Telemundo uh, for the WBO Latin title. He's a featherweight. He's fighting uh, Jorge Pazos from Mexico. Mm -hmm. The the big thing about this fight is that Cruz is the first. That, that I remember, the first active athlete, other than I saw a rugby player on, on Real Sports, who's come out as a, as a homosexual. And, um, you know, I mean, it's, it's created a buzz in the sports world because, you know, it, it's 2012. You'd like to think that people's minds have, you know, have, have changed, that, that people are accepting of people no matter what their lifestyle is. Mm -hmm. D do you think, I mean, his opponent says he, he's fine with it. Do you think that's something that's going to affect them in, in the long term, getting a, a title fight? Do you, or do you think people are, are past that? I don't. I, I think that for the, you know, people will har harbor their, uh, their negative feelings a little bit more. I don't think people have forgotten that they're you know, homophobic or anything like that. But I think people are starting to understand that it's not as acceptable to outwardly be speaking those things. So in the fight game, you know, are there opponents he's going to get in the ring with who are going to have a problem with it? Probably. Um, that's just the nature of the, you know, the way things are in, in our life. But I don't expect that it's going to become a, a public issue for Orlando Cruz. And kudos to him because of all sports, you know, maybe outside of, of football, you, you really can't think of a, a tougher scenario for a guy to come out um, and, and say that he's you know, a homosexual. Where that's, you know, in any other scenario is, is derided as, you know, like a, a sign of weakness or something like that. And these stereotypes are being knocked down in a big way. By, by his admission, and I think, you know, kudos to him because... Yeah, because that, that gay guy's going to kick the straight guy's ass on yeah, Friday he night. He will, yeah. Well, I think Orlando <laughs> Cruz is going to He's a good fight. fighter, and this yeah. is something that could only help him. I mean, I, I you know, I, as humans, you know, we're, we, we go to work every day, if, if we do have jobs, uh, we, we go to work every day, and, you know, the littlest thing could bother us, and it, and it could be in our minds until it gets cleared up, until it, it's let out. Maybe it's a gripe you have with your boss. Imagine holding in the fact that that you know you're you're a homosexual you're you're a gay man and and you you know you're struggling in, in in your career this this may be something that's that's going to help him in the fight game cuz it, it's not something that's lingering over his head it's not a monkey in, uh, on his back 
Sure. He, he let it loose. Now he can just concentrate on, on fighting. And he's a pretty damn good fighter. He is. And think about it. Up until, you know, a week or so ago, who who really knew who he was, you know, outside of a couple of purists in the boxing world? I mean, he's, or people that work at Telemundo. Or, or people that work at Telemundo. I mean, he's, you know, a, a number four through eight ranked, you know, fighter in his division. But the guy can fight, you know. And, and should he win this fight, maybe he is in line to be, you know, an opponent for somebody at, at the featherweight division. And he's talked about fighting uh, Juan Manuel Lopez. I mean, maybe it's a fight that he does get. You know, if uh, Lopez wants to come up against a, a contender or something like that before he, I hope, gets in the ring with uh, with Vasquez, uh, that's another story. But you know, maybe this is a, a good thing for him personally and professionally. Yeah, and I hope he doesn't um, he doesn't take it personally. I mean, I know probably throughout his life he's he's heard you know some 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 uh, de derogatory comments and stuff. But you know, it is boxing. You know, boys will be boys. You know, people call each other names and. You know, unfortunately, people still call each other names, and you know nowadays. But I, you know, I don't, I don't think it'll be an issue for, for yeah, Orlando Cruz, and you know, good for him. So you know, they're giving us the the wrap up, the wrap up sign. So yeah, that's boxing during dinner. There's been a, a lot of stuff that we covered. Glad we did it in a decent amount of time. Not bad. <laughs> good weekend for boxing, and we'll see you guys next week.